tell us about this. Hello, and on behalf of the Archdiocese of San Francisco, welcome to Mosaic. Today we will be introduced to a ministry of the Catholic Church which is both extremely ancient and very new. Now, this is an office, a function, an order, a service that is referred to familiarly in the very earliest scriptures of the New Testament, the letters of St. Paul and the Acts of the Apostles by St. Luke. It endured for several centuries, but for about a thousand years after that it lay dormant. And only in the 20th century did a renewed understanding of this ministry and an awareness of the church's need for it become resurrected. And the prescription for its refounding was given in the documents of the Second Vatican Council, particularly in Lumen Gentium. Now, in 1968, just over half a century ago, the Catholic bishops of the United States petitioned Pope Paul VI to approve their refounding of this ministry. And in the half century since then, more than 18,000 men in the United States have been ordained to this office. So we're talking about the office of deacon. And today our guest is one of the deacons who is ordained for the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Now after this brief break, come back and stay with us as we learn about this ancient Catholic vocation in its new application. Hello and thank you for joining us on Mosaic. Now, our guest today, let me introduce him, is Deacon Michael Giorso. You go by Mike? I just go by Deacon And Mike, the last yeah. name Giorso, with Giorso. a good Italian <laughs> consonant in there. Mike, um, you are a deacon in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. You're an ordained minister. I start, everything I know about the diaconate, I learned from you just <laughs> recently. And this idea that it's an ancient Christian vocation, I, I'm going to read from the, the, the epistle of St. Paul to the Philippians, which you turned me on to. And Paul, who's in jail now, for the, jailed by the Romans for his Catholic Christian faith, writes to the people in Philippi in Greece, and he says, I write to all of you, to the holy ones in Christ Jesus who are there, with the overseers and the deacons, the ministers, translations differ, grace to you and peace from God our Father. I give thanks to my God at every remembrance of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. So that is ancient roots, and I think, of this vocation. Um, I wanted you to tell me about the roots and the, and the beginning of this vocation of deacon, if you can. Well, the very first deacons were formed in uh, Acts chapter 6. Acts of the Apostles. Right, when the uh, Greek widows complained that they were not being served, that they were being ignored and neglected, and they asked the apostles to appoint someone to serve them. Yeah. So the apostles were appointed seven good men, the first deacons, among them Stephen on that. And this is recorded in Acts of the Apostles. Exactly, which, in Acts chapter 6. A few decades after Jesus' death, this was written. And so this was the community in Jerusalem finding its way with these deacons? Right, exactly, to begin with on that. Sure. Uh, and it, it was necessary because, like I said, it, they were forming into different classes and it, as it began to spread, People were not just Jewish that were being brought into the faith, but were also Greek. Right. And it was the Greek widows that necessitated someone of their background oh, waiting on them. So right. it was a little, you know, was a, it was a need that needed to be filled, li literally, in the early church. Okay, I get it. I mean, I'm very vague on this. So already the Jewish uh, disciples right. had Gentile converts. Exactly. And with a different culture, different needs, and so on. Yeah. And uh, as I remember from Acts, it says the apostles were busy with uh, the preaching and so on. What did the deacons do? What services did oh, they the, perform? Literally to take care of them, to provide them with food, shelter, clothing, and things of that nature, but mainly to wait on them at table. When they gathered for the meal, the Lord's meal, then also they would also have a, a little meal afterwards to make sure that the widows too were served, the Greek widows were served. And um, how do I put it? In a, in a new organization or a, a thing that's not very well organized, a new movement, a new, you have jobs somehow have to get parceled out, right? And that's part of it. Yeah. And they chose, you, you mentioned the phrase from the Acts of the Apostles. What were these men described as? Diakonos, which is servant. And what was their, their uh, description? Well, Able men or? 
good men, good men, men. Of, uh, men of good virtue, right. basically. And, and so that, that description is later used in Timothy to describe deacons. Yeah, so hopefully and, we measure up to today. And I think every Catholic knows about St. Stephen, but I don't personally connect him until you mention it to me with the diaconate. So right. tell me about Stephen. Well, Stephen uh, obviously became our first martyr on that. And that, that's, we don't know a lot, but he was also doing some preaching and he was very adamant. And it was because of his preaching that he was eventually martyred. So in Jerusalem, these deacons were at work and they're named in the Acts of the Apostles, right. these seven men. Do we know the histories of any of the other men for later? We know a little bit about Philip. Uh, it, that goes on to a, a, a story about Philip and, and uh, an Ethiopian as well as, but that, other ones we don't know as much about as to exactly what they did or, or where they went. Now, um, we understand that the offices of, in the church became organized and distinguished over the, the early centuries, right? And there was, are there three main categories of three main clerical categories. office? Tell us about uh, that. Well, the Episcopoi, or what we would now refer to as bishops. And you have to speak Greek to get this program, okay. but Episcopos. Epis which, yeah, which is our term we use as bishop. Sure. Uh, presbyteros, Presbyteros, which is priests. Yes. And then diakonos, which is deacons or servants. All right. On that. And these were, I mean, are there any other notable deacons in our early history? In the, in the very early history, uh, we have Lawrence yeah. in Rome, uh, who was uh, asked to bring about the, and present to the emperor the, the riches of the church. Now, let me pause because, yeah, I learned about him in third grade, maybe. Exactly. Famous martyr. Right. Not to give it away, <laughs> I had no association with his being a, a, a deacon. deacon. But tell, tell us that story. Well, so he's, because deacons at that time were controlling the finances. Okay. So he was asked to supply to the emperor the riches of the church. And he gathered up all the poor and brought them and presented them to him. And he was not warmly received yes, for this. Yes, how did that go over? He, <laughs> well, he ended up being martyred for that. So he was... He had uh, access to the finances of the church and was right. told, hand over the treasure. Hand over. That's good. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, is, that is a good man. And he was martyred. He was martyred. On, by on the that. Romans. Was it in uh, Rome? In Rome. In Rome. In on Rome. That. Yeah. So, then I heard about a uh, doctor of the church, uh, a learned theologian oh. in Syria. St. Ephraim. St. Ephraim in yeah. the 4th century? 4th century. And he was, it became a doctor of the church. He did many writings and letters uh, that would still come down to us today. Mm -hmm. on that. So the, the office of deacon, as I understand it, um, it became part of the order of uh, advancement toward priesthood. Is that right. right? It became one of the orders. One of the orders. In other words, we had a, a variety of orders. Okay. Uh, porter, uh, uh, subdeacon, deacon, and then uh, priest okay. on that. But th there were also other ones also in there. So we've suppressed most of those with the exception of lector and reader, mm -hmm. or lector or reader, and acolyte that we use as steps to the diaconate and also steps to the priesthood. Okay, that's good to know. Now, we're going to take a brief break. We'll come back and we'll talk more about this uh, change of the diaconate from an ancient practice into a new and modern one. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. We're talking with Deacon Mike Yorso. Now, Mike, let's turn to your personal situation. Well, let's, let's talk about this. You're not a deacon from the 3rd century no, <laughs> AD. Not at all. You're a deacon from the 20th, 20th century, and you are ordained as a minister for the Archdiocese of San Francisco. But as I said in the opening, your vocation, your office is, is a new one, founded about 50 years ago. How, right. What happened there? Well, in 1968, after Vatican II, the church was looking for ways to involve the laity more in, in the participation in the church. And part of that was expanding the office or order of the diaconate. And so the diaconate is kind of a bridge between clergy and laity. And that's what we're supposed to, we're supposed to, the idea that we bring those people to the church. Hmm. And so that we're almost like an outreach. Uh, one of our... Uh, formation directors told us that we should be preaching to the people in the back pew okay. because 
that's the ones we're bringing into church. The ones that don't quite feel that they belong and bring them into the church, bring them into more full participation in liturgy, in service, in charity, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. I, I knew that the last step for a young man on the way to the priesthood, the last order before he's ordained as a priest, he's ordained as a deacon. Right, a transitional called, deacon. A transitional deacon is yeah. what it's called. And then your vocation, is, your office is permanent deacon. Exactly. And you are ordained by the bishop for his, arch, for his diocese, archdiocese, yeah. and ordained to what ministry? You're not a junior priest of some kind. No, it, it, a lot of people think, oh, you're a mini priest, so whenever the priest isn't there, you'll take over. Mm -hmm. That's not the call to the diaconate. The call to the diaconate is more one of service, and I always say the, the priests have Christ as the icon of the high priest. That's their kind of goal. For the deacons, it's more Christ the servant is our icon, the one that we try to imitate. That is interesting, yeah. I mean, there's a theology of the priest in Latin as alter Christus. Exactly, exactly. He does the sacrifice in the Eucharist that Christ And, he, and that's is. why the deacon cannot say a mass or consecrate the Eucharist. We can participate with, we can assist the priest, yeah. but we cannot consecrate, we cannot hear confession, Yes, okay. And we cannot anoint the sick. You do have liturgical and pastoral duties, specialties. Yes. And give, give me oh. all of those. What are well, they? And, and those we can preach. Well, we can read the gospel. We can proclaim the gospel. Yes. We can preach. We can baptize. We oversee uh, vigils or committals uh, at the cemeteries. Okay, so liturgical and pastoral. And as you mentioned before, the, the pastoral side involves outreach to the laity, particularly to the marginalized people. Right. Is that right? Exactly. That's, it's specifically meant, uh, if you think of the Old Testament call to take care of the widows, the orphans, and the stranger in the land, or the immigrants, that's the call to the diaconate. You know, and I, I personally don't have experience of deacon. Now that I think about it, um, an older gentleman I knew in Oakland had become yeah. a deacon there, but in my own parish upbringing, I haven't had much experience of them. Yeah. And yet, uh, from the statistics that we agreed, that we read, 18,000 men in the United States are in this ministry throughout the state. So exactly. people have answered the call. Oh. Um, <laughs> who are these people? What's the, what's, what oh. about the call brings them in? Well, the vast majority of deacons are married. And so that you're not only having a, a deacon in the sense of a, a married man as a, as a member of the clergy, but the wife also participates with him. Very often in his ministry, my wife works with me in marriage preparation and in preparing couples to get married mm -hmm. within the church and things of that nature. Uh, deacons, uh, we have deacons who uh, work with the homeless, uh, work in soup kitchens, deacons who work in jails, jail ministry, juvenile ministry, any, anywhere that there, there's a need of service to the people of God. And Fascinating you mentioned the wife because, yeah, I think the majority of ordained deacons are married men. About 90%. Yeah. Okay. And so the church looks for that, looks for that. And the wife has to be, how do I put it, <laughs> discern her own vocation in that as well, right? Yeah, she has to be willing that her husband become ordained. We ask that before they join the diaconate formation, and we ask it every year until ordination, and then they ask it during the ordination itself. It's a very, I mean, a, a complex vocation. There must be severe training, discernment process. I don't know and so if it's on. severe, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's uh, it's f five years of theology. Okay. Uh, and sim we start with the Catechism of the Church. We start with general systematic theology. Uh, then we move on to New Testament, Old Testament theology, uh, Christology, all different types of uh, moral theology all different types of things that we need to ha learn because people will be asking us questions. Well, of course, yeah, yeah. So you have the training, five-year program, that's done locally for our archdiocese? It's done, uh, actually, we, we take it two uh, Saturdays a month. It's done at the seminary, St. Patrick's Seminary in Menlo Park. All right. Uh, takes up from nine to about three, so about six hours uh, 
like I said, two Saturdays, and then, then we'll have some evening classes sometimes. But that's the majority of the classes are held now at the seminary. So you're doing five years of night school, weekend school, with your wife's accompaniment and, yes. and permission and, and cooperation. And then when you are ordained deacon, can your work range from a few hours a week to a full-time job? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we ask that deacons put in about 10 hours a week. And that it can work it out with your pastor as to what that is. Yeah. If you're doing homilies and you're uh, presenting at all the masses, well, that's going to be 10 hours easily. Uh, if you have six masses, it, it's going to easily come, sure. come from that. But also we have them doing things like I said with uh, food baskets or uh, uh, har uh, food harvest or anything that they bring... The, St. Vincent de Paul, yeah. all different types of things that deacons also work with within the parish. Okay. But then we also work with the jail ministries and things of that nature or the homeless centers that are literally outside the parish and more for the whole archdiocese. And my understanding is 40 or 50 percent of these men are holding down full-time jobs as well. Yes, right. almost everybody is holding down a, a job. And, and maybe the wives are working too uh, and still they're putting in these hours above and beyond and they're not compensated well, for this. <laughs> and we thank you for your service. Let's take a, a brief break. We'll come back and have one more session of talk, find out about what the deacons are doing. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. We're having an enjoyable conversation, illuminating conversation with Deacon Mike Giorso. Mike, I didn't ask you for your full title at the Archdiocese where you work. Can you I'm the to? Director of Diaconate Ministry and Life. Director of Diaconate Ministry and Life. And I take it that means the deacons have a ministry, but they also have a life. Right. Now, how many deacons do we have in our Archdiocese? Well, this is always a, an excellent question. Yeah. We have 110 incarnated in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Yeah. 20 of those are actually working outside the Archdiocese. In ministry? In ministry, as far away as Guatemala and the Honduras on that. Of the, the not remaining 90, maybe 15 are retired. Mm -hmm. So 75 active deacons for San Francisco. And they're mostly in parish work? Almost all are in parish work. Okay. Some are in uh, like jail ministry or yeah. things of that nature that are specific. Uh, or some of them are both in parish work and uh, a, a, an archdiocese in ministry. We have about 100 parishes in the archdiocese. Right. We have about 100 deacons. How many would we like to have? What would be the ideal? Would you? Ideally, we, uh, we, I would like to have two deacons per parish. Okay. Uh, that way, all of it doesn't fall on one person. Yeah. And, and we could actually use two deacons uh, per parish. So we have plenty of room to grow, uh, and we also have plenty, uh, plenty of time, and we need people uh, joining up who are a little bit younger. We, we ask that they don't apply after the age of 60. Okay, that makes sense. I know that retirement age is a time when a man who's freed of his prior responsibilities looks around and says, this might be for me. So you, you have some of these people applying. We definitely do. But you do. want younger We men would as like, well. and, and, but you can't be younger, say, 35. Okay. You need to be ordained at 35. And I noticed that in January there were three evening meetings in different right. places, different counties of the Archdiocese, and the advertisement was interested in being a deacon, come to come. an informational meeting. Come and find out about no it. No salesman will call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? no, no, no commitment or anything of that nature, but just information. But people are able to find out readily what the diaconate is and what they, how they can find out about it from you. And you're on the website? Website, you have, okay. uh, our, the, you know, sf.org. Right. Uh, we also have a, an office at the Chancery, uh, office of the diaconate or yeah. diaconate formation. They can call either Deacon Fred Toda or... Deacon Mike. Excellent, yeah. And Deacon Mike, I, I have to say the, the job seems to have agreed with you because when we first met, I thought you were uh, 20 years younger than I am. <laughs> I find out that that's not the case. So that's not the case. Something's <laughs> working well for you in your job. I've been very you, fortunate. Tell, tell me briefly, though, how you got into this. How did you discern this vocation? Uh, it, it was, it's a long process for me. Uh, 
out of the out of grammar school, I felt called to the seminary. I spent eight years in the seminary. And you're a local boy, San Francisco. San Francisco. And uh, my senior year in high school, I, as a senior year in college, all of a sudden I discerned that God wasn't calling me to the priesthood. He was calling me to service within the church, but not to priesthood. Mm -hmm. So I kind of put that aside uh, and, and eventually got married, raised a family, four children. And it wasn't until... Oh, I guess I was about 50, 55. I began feeling a call to more, to okay. do more. And I kept saying, nah, I don't know what that is. Well, my best friend, Padre Matteo Shidi, told me that, Mike, you're being called to the diaconate. And I said, oh, no, God doesn't want that. No, no, no. So I argued with him for a long time about it. <laughs> he turned out to be correct. Uh, I, I was being called to the diaconate. And it took me a while to realize that and a little bit of argument with God. <laughs> uh, but I, I've, as I, I decided to sh aspire to it, to join the aspirancy and discern yeah. whether or not this was for me. Yeah. And it, obviously, I found it very much for me. And my wife was only too supportive. In fact, she told me, what took you so long? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you and your wife with four kids with and four a prior kids. career, you told me, yeah. you, you were I, a teacher. I was a teacher. I, I had a teaching store in San Francisco. And you Francisco. had a resource store. You're an expert in, with a master's in East Asian East history. East Asian history. <laughs> so all walks of life are found in the diaconate. And I'm going to say, I hope that you guys have a good collegial relationship and structure. You need one another, I think, in this mission. We definitely do. I think that that was the surprise for us, uh, or at least for me and my wife, as we joined the diaconate community. It was such a warm and welcoming community. There's so many good people there. I think that I, I'm constantly humbled by how much or how many of the, the uh, deacons and their wives are doing wonderful ministry. And I always say, why am I the spokesperson? They're much better at this. They're, doing, they're out there doing it. That's <laughs> humility. Mike, we have one minute left, a little less. Can you give us a brief prayer to oh. close? Thanks. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the day that you've given us. We ask you to guide us to where you want us to be today, as you do always. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And thank you very much for joining me. And I want to tell our audience, you can, as I said, find out all about the diaconate in the Archdiocese of San Francisco by going to the website, sfarch.org. There's a web page. Mike's telephone number is there. And um, informational evenings, these will continue. They, they continue, yes. All right. So men, take a look and ask about the diaconate. It's a fascinating occupation and a great service to the church. So thank you once again for being with us. And we'll see you next time on Mosaic.